Hello everyone, back to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week to 10 days. Well, today's second video takes us to around 23rd of June. Uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS. That runs to around a couple of weeks. We haven't got the ECM ensembles for you uh, today. They've not updated at the Icelandic Metal. So actually, there's a few problems within uh, a lot of the websites that we use for these uh, videos. We'll talk about it as we go along. But uh, both the GFS um, and the ECM have been upgraded. So uh, we, we've been talking about the GFS upgrade for a long time. We've lost the parallel. The parallel has become the main operational GFS run. And a lot of the websites that use the data from the operational GFS, they've got a sort of idea out the various glitches within their websites um, to interpret that data. So you'll see what I'm talking about as we go along. Also, the upgrade within the ECMWF, that seems to have uh, stopped us from getting the uh, the ECM ensembles at the Icelandic Met Office. Hopefully, they'll get things sorted out there uh, very shortly. But we've got enough in the video to be going on with anyway. I also look at Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days, no problems uh, with that. And uh, the first video up earlier on today was the verification for the spring 2019 forecast. So we have verified the spring forecast, and I think we did quite well, actually. I'm quite pleased with how the spring forecast turned out uh, this time. So have a look at that when you're finished with this video. Well, it's another really wet afternoon out there this afternoon. Outbreaks of rain covering many parts of the country. Very wet across eastern parts of Scotland, down into northeastern England. We've also got another band of pretty heavy rain moving through the Midlands into central, southern, southeast. And in between, there's some showers, and these showers could turn pretty beefy through this afternoon too. Not only showery, but also very disappointing temperatures. Again, not quite as bad as they have been over recent days, but nevertheless still way uh, below average. So um, the coolest temperatures up across Scotland, North East England actually, got Aviemore at just 7 degrees uh, to 2 o'clock on uh, a mid-June afternoon over towards in, in the, in the Berthing. Uh, we're at 8 degrees. Aberdeen's just at 8 degrees as well, pouring with rain and the wind off the North Sea. No doubt it's pretty uh, pretty bleak there. Bulmar is at 9 degrees down to northeast of England. Newcastle at 8 degrees to Warcop at uh, 9 degrees. So we're stuck in um, single digits in the northeast of part of the country. It's pouring with rain. We've got a cold northeast wind. Going a bit further south, Doncaster is up to 13 degrees. Church Lawford. In the Midlands, up to 13 degrees. Bryce Norton, also 13 degrees. Oxford, 13. Cranfield, 14. Uh, Bedford, 13. So these temperatures are up by a couple of degrees compared to what we've had over the past few afternoons. But they're still very, very dismal. I mean, it's a mid-June uh, afternoon. To be only getting maximums of like 13 degrees is uh, pretty atrocious still, uh, really, even though it is a little bit up on what we've had in uh, in recent days. Going further south was towards London Gap, we're, we're at 15 degrees. Headcorn is at 15 degrees uh, as well. Shoreham at uh, 15 degrees. I've got one place or a few places flashing away at 16. So we've got Gloucester Airport at 16 and uh, also got to South End at a 16 too. Let's see where else we've got at 16. Lid is at 16. And uh, also there, Manston is at 16. So there are highest temperatures. And it's just in the far southwest of Scotland, I think, maybe around here would be fresh away at 16. Maybe not. So um, it's kind of like a, a maximum 16 degrees. That's when you can turn around to 61 Fahrenheit. It's a little bit better than we've had over the past few days. Although down in the southeast, it's actually conversely a little bit cooler than we've had over the past couple of days. But anyway, these temperatures are very, very dismal for uh, the middle of June. So um, not great. And the CET continu continues its ever, uh, ever sort of continuing plunge, really. So uh, we have now gone under 13 degrees. Here is the uh, CET. The central England temperature provisional up to the 12th of June. I'm just going to get me highlighter. I forgot to do that before starting the recording. So we'll just quickly flip that around and send it over to there. 
So, uh, yeah, we're up to, uh, well, we're down to 12.9 uh, now, which is an anomaly of 0 0.7 degrees below average, heading towards 1 degree below average provisional up to yesterday, the 12th of June. That may go down a little bit more over the next uh, next day or so. It'll probably then stabilise over the weekend, and next week it may start to tick up a little bit. But certainly the first half of June 2019 is going to be... Uh, colder than average. It'll be very interesting to see where we finish up at the end of uh, the month. I haven't got the 500 bit of our high dummy flow charts from Penn State University, so that's one of the issues that we've had that, that we're having with these model upgrades at the moment. So I'm not able to bring those to you. There's an issue here with the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles as well. I'm sure you can. Uh, see that. So the red, we're looking at London today, the red line here is a 30 year upper air temperature average for London. But then we've got this bizarre sort of green line just here. I'm not sure what that's doing, but again, it's probably down to some sort of error within the data that they are harvesting from the upgraded uh, GFS. They will get all of these issues ironed out, but it'll just take a little while to do it. This uh, green line is probably the operation, the new operational. Uh, GFS run. I'm not sure what's gone wrong there, but they will get these problems ironed out. Just takes it a while, sort of, uh, sort of tweak things out when these uh, models get an upgrade. Anyway, ignoring that green line, you can see what's going on here. So we're starting off pretty cool at the moment. Not quite as chilly as it has been, but still a bit below average going into the weekend. It does warm up through the early part of next week, but only briefly, uh, and then dropping down again through the middle and second half of next week. Overall, I think we can say the second half of uh, of June, or kind of like the final ten days, perhaps more more um, reliably, uh, is kind of a little bit warmer than it has been, a little bit warmer than average, maybe. But again, we're not talking about anything particularly hot. There's very little sign of anything genuinely hot coming up there. We might get the temperature to mid twenties through the early part of next week when we get this spike just here. That might be enough to get you around twenty five or 26 degrees, but nothing particularly hot uh, in evidence there going through to the end of June. Precipitation-wise, so it looks rather showery, I think. Not as wet as it has been. So the trend is warmer and drier. We can say that. The trend for next week is warmer and drier. But... Again, we're not talking about anything particularly warm. We're not talking about anything totally dry. And as we go perhaps towards the final week of June, maybe the hints are there that it's turning even more unsettled then perhaps into the final days of June. Temperature anomalies from the 13th to the 21st of June, they're a little bit cooler than average. Now, another problem is with the precipitation anomaly. That obviously is not, uh, is not right. So, uh, again, just... Problems that are going to be ironed out with these websites um, now that the GFS model has been upgraded. So that looks okay. That's fine. The temperature anomaly, a bit cooler than average from the 13th to the 21st June. The precipitation anomaly looks uh, looks wrong. So we'll move on from that quite quickly. And we'll go on to the GFS uh, 6 o'clock operation run. Now, this is the upgraded version of the GFS. No more parallel. The old GFS has been downgrade. I think that becomes the control run now. Uh, actually, the GFS control run that we talk about when we do ensembles watches. Um, so that's the control run, and we've gone on to our new version of the operation run. This is how things look on Sunday. Rather westerly, rather showery, and a little bit warmer, but not particularly warm on Sunday. Into next week, again, showery conditions starting to push a little bit further north. We're starting to get a little bit of a ridge building down into the south, bringing somewhat drier conditions. This takes us up to Thursday next week. Bit of a ridge of high pressure there in across England and Wales, bringing some slightly drier and warmer conditions. Uh, still quite showery, though, up in the north. Into the end of next week and running up towards day 10, actually starts to make more of this high pressure to our east. Turning the wind into more of an easterly, that will start to bring in warmer air from off the continent. Although it's rather unstable, this is how things look at day 10, which is Sunday the 23rd of June. The high pressure is there to our east. We are bringing in pretty warm air from the east. But we've got this area of low pressure just here developing underneath the ridge, and that could be bringing a threat of thunder. So if it does start to warm up next week, I think very quickly it'll turn unstable and will start turning more unsettled. In the more extended range with the GFS operational run, Hints that it's becoming more unsettled again, and we saw that within the GFS ensembles, actually, 
Just a few hints of more unsettled conditions through the last week of June. Long way off, though, and uh, I think there is quite a bit of uncertainty that this final week of June. Of course, this is covering the Glastonbury period. This is Saturday 29th of June, so that would be Glastonbury Saturday, uh, if you like. And... Um, yeah, the Glastonbury update is going to start tomorrow, but there's a lot of uncertainty about this uh, last week of June. Uh, now we can show you a bit of GEM, because we haven't got to talk about the uh, parallel GFS anymore, so we've got time to show you other uh, models. So this is the GM. haven't seen this for a very long time. The Canadian model shows that Sunday is likely to be rather showery and relatively cool. Uh, still heading through the course of next week. Well, in the south, we start to try and build a little bit of higher pressure, so it maybe turns a bit drier down in the south, a little bit warmer. But up in the north, it still looks quite cool and showery even then. Now, in the more extended range, the GFS, the GM, I should say, does build up quite a nice ridge. Look at that. This is day 10, Sunday, the 23rd of June. And it's a pretty nice ridge, actually, that's building across the country. 1,025 millibars. There's relatively warm air to our south as well waiting for us to tap into. Let's just look at the upper air temperatures. You can see there's pretty hot air actually sitting across much of France. So we could run on a day or so long, where I suspect we'll start to pull up some very warm air from the south, possibly even our first hot days of the summer, a day or so on from that chart. But again, I think it quite quickly turn and stay, but it doesn't look like it's a reach that's going to last for a long time. So if we could go on another day, so I suspect it would turn hotter, but then it would very quickly turn thundery. We do see hint, hints of low pressure down here. That's a heat load really over Spain, but it wouldn't take much at all for that start to pick up more as it moves north. So I don't see anything sustained in terms of hot weather in June. I think the, um, the atmosphere is too unstable that if the temperature does pick up and the humidity does increase, it will very quickly break into further source. Maybe by August we'll be able to sustain big areas of high pressure, but not at this point. Uh, this is the east centre. That's again rather cool, rather showery on Sunday. And as we go through into the early part of next week, or so in the south, we tried to build up a little bit of a ridge. Uh, although on Wednesday it looks like there's some sort of little shallow low there in the south that might bring some showery rain through the middle part of next week. Into the more extended range, heading up towards day 10, high pressure again tries to make it smooth. Doesn't make as much of that high pressure as the GM does, but nevertheless by day 10, which is Sunday the 23rd of June, we are under a weak ridge of high pressure. So I think next week it's definitely shaping up to be warmer and drier compared to this week, although given how cold and wet it's been this week, that wouldn't be particularly uh, that would be particularly difficult to get it warmer and drier than next week. Not seeing anything sustained in terms of hot weather yet, but certainly improvements ahead. And we did a video the other day saying that second half of June is likely to see improvements compared to the first half. Again, not particularly difficult because it doesn't get much worse than the weather that, that we've had in the first half of this month in the summer. Um, but improvements ahead, I think we can say that now quite uh, definitively, even if it's not going to set the world of life. We're not talking about anything like we had last year at this stage. Uh, right, finally, the GM. Can't show you the ECM ensembles. They've not been updated at the Icelandic Met Office either. So, as I say, we are struggling a little bit with our websites uh, for uh, this video. But we move on to the GM, finally. So, these are 500 mm of our heights, and they're broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us from the 16th to the 25th of June. The coming 10 days has above average heights to our north and east, below average heights in the Atlantic. Becoming drier and warmer, I think we can say that uh, from this chart. So again, it's not setting the world on fire. It's not anything like we had last summer, but the trend is towards somewhat drier and warmer conditions through that 10 day period. And this looks quite good as well. This is the next 10 day period going from the 26th of June to the 5th of July with the above average heights becoming centered over top of the UK. So that could turn very warm and dry actually. That could be real summer uh, getting going there through the end of June and into the start of July. Next 10 day period looks a little bit more mixed. This would be uh, 6th to the 15th of July. The above average heights then sort of moving to our southwest below average heights up to our north. That would send the jet stream on more of a northwest, southeast alignment. So that probably becomes cooler and more showery 
through that week. It's not a washout. It's not as bad as the where we've had in the last few days. But as we go from the 6th to 15th of July, probably a cooler and more unsettled interlude. Then the high pressure comes back quite nicely in the next 10-day period. And this is perhaps the best of all of the uh, charts in terms of dry and warm weather. This is from the 16th to the 25th of July. And all of a sudden, we're getting this big ridge developing through the Atlantic into the UK. And then also, importantly, going up to Scandinavia as well. That would be properly sending the jet stream northwards. And it's a very stable ridge as well. That's a strong and stable ridge. Um, it's kind of thing we had last summer. So that would potentially turn us a lot hotter there in the second half of July. That would potentially be genuine summer arriving in the second half of July. Uh, kept us waiting a long time. But if it came off, that could be really uh, dry and hot conditions setting up there from the 16th to the 25th of July. Bear in mind that is days... Uh, 31 to 40. So it's a very, very long way out. It's in the most unreliable part of that update. But uh, if it came off, if, big if, if that ridge did extend in from the Azores high into the Scandinavian high, you would get a large ridge, kind of like what we had last summer, and that would definitely start to put in much hotter air from the south and the east, and it would turn a lot drier as well. We shall see. That's very speculative. But I think we can say more sensibly and more reliably, perhaps, that uh, next week is going to be better than this week. So that is good news if you're fed up with this uh, torrential rain and cold temperatures. that have. Now, that's some very, very cold uh, temperatures as well. I haven't been much reporting about that in the media. They've been keeping very quiet about it compared to the um, headlines that we had last summer in terms of the hot temperatures haven't been reporting these very, very, very low temperatures that we've had by day over the past few days. I can't think why that would be. But um, anyway, we have had very impressively uh, cool to even cold temperatures over the past few days. And next week will be warmer. There won't be as much rain around. It's not going to be brilliant, but definite improvements are ahead. Right, that's it for your videos for today. Tomorrow we've got JMA Friday. We've got a week to 10-day video update as well. And we will finish up tomorrow with the first update for Glastonbury, which I know a lot of you are waiting for. First update for Glasto tomorrow evening. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.